Hey peeps, Phoenix here, we're continuing on with Earthbound. In the last episode, Paula and Ness got trapped, and we encountered our new friend, Jeff! In this episode, we're gonna keep exploring the north with our new bubble monkey. So, I love winters. It's one of my favorite spots in the game, if not for the fact that there's really not a lot to do here yet. Cause I mean, oh no, I just remembered. There will be something that we have to do later and it is a nightmare, but for the most part, Winters is actually a pretty nice place. And this might be my first mistake, but here we have the Rough Goat. And I'm going to show off Jeff's special battle move, Spy. This is already a mistake. But yeah, what um, Jeff's ability Spy can do is that it's able to tell you the weaknesses and stats of the enemy. And add to it, sometimes he'll find treasure behind the enemy. Now, just like Paula's praying, I'm not going to be using it that often, I think. But I'm going to see if I can survive by eating boiled egg. I'm somehow alive! Oh gee, thanks Bubble Monkey, finally getting involved! Yeah, this might have been a mistake. Oh, holy cow, we actually survived. Jeff is now level 2, offense by 1, maximum HP by 1, Jeff is now level 3, IQ by 1, HP by 2. Wow, those are actually kind of crappy level ups. Not gonna lie, Jeff, that's kind of a bad start. Um... Another thing I should mention, the, while Paula and Ness have PSI abilities, Jeff will never get any PSI abilities. And some would think, wait a minute, then why does he need IQ, since IQ just helps with PP growth. The reason Jeff needs IQ is because of broken goods requiring a certain IQ limit. This becomes a real dilemma eventually, though, because when you get IQ capsules, you can't really tell, am I supposed to give this to Jeff so he can fix things faster, or am I supposed to give it to the PSI users? Team animals have gone wild, well, something evil's going on, and so why do you rest here for sure? Aww! If only the... I never noticed this theme! The winter's mix to the waking up theme. I wonder, will it play a certain part? Do, do. Ah, I was hoping to do the whole um, Pollyanna theme, but I guess one could dream. You know, it's the layering map layout of this that really kind of interests me in building maps and games. Because I feel you can get really creative with map design. So long as you don't go overkill or underkill to where it's like, here's a linear path. There's no side treasures, there's no hidden rooms. But if you go too much in which you can't even figure out where the heck you are. And I mean, some games back in the day, and I think some nowadays. Actually, yeah, yeah, one that I can think of in particular is um, Persona Q. Where, basically, the map doesn't exist. You draw the map, and... Oh, Jeff, now level 4. Oh, baby! Offense by 3. Oh, baby! Defense by 3. Speed by 2. Guess by 2. IQ by 1. Luck by 1. HP by 2. And with Persona Q, when you walk around, it gives you a small design on the touchscreen that you can draw the map for. I like doing that, where you get to just sort of figure out and plan as you go along. And I think there was, like, games way, way back to where they would, um, they wouldn't show a map either, and you'd have to actually grab a piece of paper and draw the map yourself. So you've also been bitten by Tessie Mania. You're in luck. We're going to be able to see Tessie tomorrow. Can't wait. And I don't know, the simple map designing trait for a guy that gets lost in games non-stop Trust me, it's weird the fact that I actually like 
maps in map designing outside of gaming. Well, map designs for games outside of the game. You know where I'm going with this. And again, I remember saying in some video that I can't read maps for crap. So getting to design my own, that actually means I have a chance to understand it. Sorry, I'm going oddly on about maps for some reason. Anywho, I'm the cook for the Tessie Watching Club. How about some stew? No, no, there's no need to pay me. These people are nice. You're a friend who I've never met before. Jeff, head south. I am Paula. If you hear this message, go to the south. Oh, see, this is Jeff's brain coming into action. So he fixed the broken spray can, and it became defense spray. I am probably not going to use that. If just for, like, a joke battle. Because defense spray is, like, an item we'll see called a sudden guts pill. Where it'll only be effective for the one battle. And I'm honestly not a fan. I know Pokemon does that sort of thing with, um... Oh god, what are they called? I can't remember what they're called. X Defense and X Power. I'm not a fan of those. I don't like the whole, here's a temporary boost. Maybe that Whirlpool is... Wait, Whirlpool? This is what we've been fighting for. Finally, it's coming out! Oh? Excuse me. Tessie is emerging! Oh, this game and its humor. What a cute little monkey. Would you like a piece of gum? Maybe monkeys don't like gum. Oh, trust me, he likes it plenty. Oh. Oh, come on, dude! Kill the mood! Pictures taken as intensely. I'm a photographer of Venus, but you say so myself. Okay, get ready for a new memory. Look at the camera. Ready, save, multi -pickles. I like how Jeff gives no crap about this. Wow, a great photograph. It'll always bring back the funnest of memories. Moving on. I've been saying that a lot for some reason. Tessie may unexpectedly be living in the woods. I personally think so. I heard that the wind is always blowing when Tessie appears. <laughs> I feel like I'm catching a cold. I don't care if Tessie has no animation. I freaking love Tessie. No idea why. And see you guys. Apparently you don't give a crap that Tessie was right in front of you. I think it's maybe because of her music that plays when um, you ride on her. Bye, Tetsy. Man, that makes me remember all those sort of trumpet sounding songs on the Super Nintendo. It really brings me back and kind of miss those times when it was just that kind of music, but it was so good when they just made the best of what they had where now it's we got flipping orchestras at this point it's like sometimes the simple thing is what i like to hear sometimes because i'll go back and listen to the soundtracks of like sim city for example 
I know SimCity really only has like three songs in the game, but they're so calming. Who is dropping pencil statues? The dungeon has no entrance fee. Come on in. You know, I get the feeling if I ever make a map or dungeon in a game, this would pretty much be the first dungeon I'd make. Welcome to my modest dungeon. Break road. So, yeah, this dungeon is as simple as you could probably get. Oh, that is not good. No, 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 no. Please don't be missing. Do not get a critical. Thank you. Please kill him. Oh, thank you. I didn't want to die just as I got in. And Jeff is not level 5. Vitality by 1. IQ by 1. Mage by 10. This is another thing I kind of appreciate with this game is... I know we didn't do it with Paula. But... Another teammate is in another area leveling up with us and we're seeing him level up. Where in some RPGs it's like, oh, they're already leveled up. Oh. Oh, the worthless protoplasm. The name fits them. I can't believe it actually attacked. I didn't know they actually did that. Yeah, I thought for the most part they just called their friends. And then they confuse themselves. Oh, and another thing about um, Jeff is that with his weapon, he's not gonna be. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's not gonna be hitting criticals. Ever. And another. Oh, cookie! A worthless cookie. But I like the games where... Well, actually, I don't know if I can think of another one like this. Ooh, Broken Iron, nice. Where some games, you find the party member and they're already leveled up. Why the hell is there a magic butterfly here? I mean, granted, I love seeing the magic butterfly, but... I don't, I don't know why there's a magic butterfly in here. That's basically taunting you. Because Jeff doesn't get PP. And the Mad Duck! And once again, these are one of those enemies that really don't do much. I think one... Yeah, it'll... See, Mad Ducks are more problematic with PK users. Because most of its attacks involve either turning off someone's PP or reducing it. But with Jeff, that's really not a problem. And then there are some games where, the, uh, well, I guess in Paula's instance, this is the same deal. But their level is at the lowest. And you have to build it up and hope they don't die from the first battle you go into. And this one kind of goes half and half, where it's like, you get to see progression of one character. Watch for fall. Oh, crap! Picture is second and taste. I am before the cover genius venue, say so myself. Okay, get ready for this memory. Look at the camera, ready, say fuzzy pickles. Wow, what a great photograph. Loves me the fondness of memories. But now that I think of it, I don't know if I can think of a game where it's sort of. Uh, you see the new party member. Like, you see there's a little bit of a backstory to see how they got to the level they're at, instead of just seeing them up here. It might just be me, I don't know. Because I'd like to see development of characters. Character development, I guess some would say. Gems now level 6, offense by 1, IQ by 1, luck by 1, mage by 3. I mean, sure, you see most character development happen when they already join the party, because that's when they give their backstory. But I'm um, just weird in which I sort of like to see the backstory play out instead of seeing it explained. 
Granted, that would take up uh, more game time, but. Eh. So, yeah, this is the most difficult area of the game. I cannot believe I am surviving so long. I think maybe that's why I like winters. It's like, it's the calm before the storm. Oh, no! Oh! I don't know how I didn't get back attack there, but I am going to eat something before I die. And that's why I just don't trust the critical chances. A stun gun! Yay! I got a taser for Christmas! And yep, that's a good boost. I like how the monkey gets confused midway through. Wait to go. Please come back again. What I crawled. Alright, let's talk to Maxwell here and make sure we get just to be safe because I don't want to end up getting killed from the enemies we'll see on the outside because trust me hey buddy maybe it was too easy my name is Brickroad the dungeon developer I devote my life to making dungeons well by combining my skills and Dr. Edna's intelligence I can become dungeon man the first combination of human and dungeon in history let's meet again once I have become dungeon man would you like to get a good release rest? Yes, please. Take care. Come back again. Will do! I like him. Okay, now there's actual danger. I'm tired of putting up with you rats! Wait, that was a back attack? Oh, just slugs. So yeah, most of the enemies we're going to be seeing around here are basically enemies from the first dungeon of the game. So it's nothing too scary, but it will be getting scary. Jeff is now level 7, IQ by 1, HP by 3. You are not getting good level ups, Jeff. Which is weird, because... I remember in my old playthrough of this, Jeff was freaking killing it. And he was responsible for certain scenarios that were amazing to see. Like, I know when we get to those areas, I'm gonna bring up what happened in the old playthrough. Cause Jeff was amazing. Now it just seems like he's not wanting to be. Well, at least we're killing these guys in one hit now. Just free experience for Jeff, I suppose. Oh, great, a whole swarm of them. And down he goes. And there's a hamburger, which for some reason I, you know, I'm questioning the hamburger. But I should be questioning why there's a present in the cave with a hamburger inside. Not gonna lie, that'd be a weird birthday gift. Like, granted, having a hamburger for your birthday is a weird idea. In fact, a hamburger actually sounds really good right about now. But, I'm questioning why you put the hamburger in a box. Okay, well, I guess McDonald's and every other fast food joint does that. And why you gift wrapping. But Jeff is not level 8. Oh, baby! Offense by 3, defense by 2. Oh, baby! Speed by 3, guess by 2, vitality by 1, IQ by 1, luck by 1, HP by 9. See, now that's a good level up. Maybe he's just saving them. Saving them so he can be ultimately powerful near the end. You know, I'd rather put up with these guys and deal with the mushroom. Aw, these guys are like they're friends! 
I just ruined the friendship. Oh, I feel kind of bad now. Those two look like they were buddies. No, I don't care. I am not putting up with mushrooms. No. Wait, oh crap, or are these guys different? No! If I fight any, I'm fighting one. Because they can still do that whole crap where they drop spores on you. Oh, thank you for attacking the same one. Because I don't want to get spored with Jeff. Because the problem is, there's no healer. And if I get spored, that's going to be a huge problem, because it messes with the controls. Okay, what do we got here? And there's a bottle rocket! So, another thing about Jeff. Oh, hell no. Um, Bubble Monkey, can you help us out? Thanks, buddy! But another thing about Jeff is, he's the only one that can use bottle rockets. If you try to use them with someone else, they'll say that they have no clue how to use it. However, I am not going to be using the bottle rockets now because... Thank you. Because bottle rockets are powerful! Oh, Jeff's not level 9, IQ by 1, HP by 3... Ugh. Jeff. Jeff. You can do better than that. Jeff. You need to get more stats on you, buddy. And a mushroom cookie. Uh, no. Yeah, I'll leave the cookie behind. Though I should eat something, because I am low on health. Um, might as well eat a cookie. And there's a cheap bracelet. Something for him. Some sort of defense. Never question it. Okay, that thing's gonna... Oh, that is not fair! Oh, I am so nervous right now. I really don't want them to use spores. I really, really, really don't want them to use spores. Whew. And a cookie! But I can't carry a cookie. Nope. Yep. Oh, come on! Hamburger, I guess. I'm just way too low on health right now to care. Okay. Again, so long as they don't drop any spores, I don't need to worry. Jeff's not level 10. IQ by 1. HP by... Jeff. Jeff. Come on now. Well, at least we got a back attack on this one. And down he goes. And gee, cookie, I am so surprised. You know, I think for my sake, I'll go ahead and eat another cookie. Now, this is your sanctuary location, but... Only this can absorb the power of this place. Yeah, Jeff cannot one-hand this guy. And I wouldn't want to, to be honest. 
I get the feeling if we tried to take him one on one, we'd be screwed. And gee, a cookie for me. Now she's my type. I think I'll ask her for a date. And just like that, romance causes us to lose a friend. Bubblegum. I'm moving on. Oh, God. I don't think I can take those guys on right now. You've got yourself a favorite. Let me explain. These stones are making a pattern. It's called Stonehenge. You have also often visit here. You must see on TV or read about in the tabloids. Yes, that's Stonehenge. So, those guys are enemies, but before I even attempt to take them on, I'm gonna heal up. Mr. Brickbird, a dungeon master, referred to you, right? And not only that, but who? Oh, my, my son? Oh, I can't, I can't believe it. You're Jeff, my son. It's been maybe ten years since I last saw you. I'm so glad you're such a healthy boy. Uh, those glasses look good on you. How about a donut? Sure, I can eat. Well, I was only offering. I'd also like a donut right now. Have you already checked out Stonehenge? Yeah, I did. Well, at least I asked. Mm, okay. By the way, why are you here? Oh, I see. That girl named Paula must have sensed I was here. Okay, I'll try to help out. I'm trying to make a phase disorder that can conduct two points in space and time. It's still incomplete. I'll let you use another invention I call the Sky Runner. It's a little bit old, but it'll certainly help. When you're bored, always listen for the message that comes from your destination. You'll get that for sure if you listen to the message. The now machine over there is the Sky Runner. What do you think? It's an idiot. Get in. Let's get together again in ten years or so. Uh-huh, will do, but I actually do want to show off that one enemy first before I try. And a broken pipe! I'm actually going to want that, so... And now we check. And I'm also going to sleep. I don't know. Oh, there's the phone, so. So we're going to do that. We're going to save. And we're going to try to fight one of those things, the cavemen. I'm really nervous about doing this though, because I'm going to be using a powerful item, and I'm going to risk dying, but eh. Alright, where are you at? There you go, there's one. Really? Three times now! Big chest taking us and taking us. I'm fucking up for genius if I do this to myself. Okay, get ready for an instant memory. I look at the camera. Ready, save for the pickles. Wow, what a great photograph. It'll always reflect the fondest of memories. Uh, good to know. Alright. So, this might be a mistake. Because these guys are kind of strong for Jeff. But I will show off the bottle rocket. It does a lot of damage. Bad news. This guy has a lot of damage. Oh, am I able am I gonna be able to am I gonna be able to? Ooh, come on, no. Do I have anything I can eat? Oh I do not. I have a cookie, but uh. Yeah! And a Pictic Lunch, which is actually a good healing item. Gem is now level 11. Offense by 1, defense by 1, guts by 1, IQ by 1, match HP by 1. Okay, so yeah. That's the only one I'm going to be fighting, mind you. Those guys are way too tough. Because the Bottle Rocket's what did a good chunk of damage. Not for that, I think I'd be screwed. So I really don't need this. And I'll explain why once we get to the point. But... This is the Skyrunner. 
and see what it is about. Oh, I always forget how to do this. Yeah, okay, but how do I... Oh, there we go. Oh, I love the music that plays for this. Man oh man, did that ever scare me. Scarbrunner, I guess it took a little damage when landing. Oh well. You don't have to explain you don't have to explain a thing. I'm Jeff. I came because you called me. Um not very strong, really excited, and kinda shy. And I tend to be a little reckless. This is just the way I am. I hope you want me to be your friend, okay? Heck yeah! Alright, let's get back to the journey then. And now Jeff is part of the team. And I think that's a good spot to end the episode. And in the next one, we will go exploring 3 with Jeff as soon as we get out of this trap. If you guys have any random questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next one.